So in my last video, we talked about different ways that you can laser engrave wood. And this one, I wanna talk specifically about these reverse inlays that we can do with wooden veneers. And this is gonna be a more old school YouTube step-by-step -step style tutorial. So if you are interested in making this and you wanna see actually how to do it, this is what we are going to do. All right, let's jump into it. All right, before we even get into the artwork, let's talk about these veneers. Uh, I've got a link to them down below. Uh, but basically, this is what you're gonna need. Um, you're gonna need this aluminum tape, uh, which is gonna allow us to keep the veneers attached when we do the reverse inlay. Uh, and then obviously, you're gonna need something that you are going to put the inlay inside of. Uh, in my case, uh, I've been using walnut uh, just because I think it looks great, especially when you put it up against a lighter veneer. I think this one was maple. So I actually do have a maple, and this will be a good contrast once I actually put some finish on it. First thing that we're going to do is trim this down to size just so I don't have to waste my uh, veneer. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna go ahead and mount this to the aluminum tape. Now, if you didn't watch the other video, the reason we are using this uh, versus just like a normal masking tape um, is that this is metal, meaning that the laser can't go through the aluminum tape. Um, so we're going to remove the inverse image of whatever we put on our wood. And when we do that, we'll still have the metal tape as a backing. So then we can put it on top. That makes it way easier uh, versus having to take little single pieces and put everything in the final design, which would be insane. Again, Again, I'm gonna cut this down to size, and then we are going to attach it to our veneer. And then I'm actually going to trim it down. And then using a rubber roller, I wanna get this as flat as possible. Now we're going to be getting into Lightburn. If you guys want to check out the actual file that I used for this project, there's a link down below. Right now I have my SVG image pulled in. So if I zoom all the way in, you can tell this is a vector, uh, meaning there is an outline to the shape. Uh, and now one thing I just uh, learned or relearned, I'd forgotten about, is before to get a preview of what this is going to look like um, if you're doing a fill. So you can see over here on the right, I've got my uh, zero zero layer uh, set to a fill, um, but it's just showing the lines. So when I actually go to cut it out, if I go to this preview, um, you can see it's gonna be black on the inside. To quickly see what it actually looks like visually in your artboard, you can come up here to the uh, gear icon to the settings and turn on filled uh, rendering. Um, this might slow down your computer. That's why they normally have it turned off. Uh, but now we can see what we are actually going to and great. And then one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group this whole thing together. Uh, just so if I like click and drag, you can see these pieces are separate. So I am going to select from either the left or the right, right click and hit group. Uh, so now if I move this around, we are good to go. So I am going to do this around like five inches or so. So that's gonna give us 127. So if I come up here to the top, uh, I want to make uh, my maximum 127. And since it's locked, it's gonna scale everything down. Now this is what we are going to engrave from the walnut. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, label this because we're gonna use a few different layers. So I just double clicked on my layers right here. It says labels, I think that was just from an old project I had. And um, we're gonna call this the walnut pocket. Uh, and I'm gonna start out at about 350 uh, millimeters per second at 60% uh, power. And I'm actually just gonna turn my air assist off. Either way, I should be fine because I'm gonna be sanding this back down. So even if I get some charring on the edges, uh, we'll be good to go. And then in terms of lines per inch, we're just gonna make this, uh, let's just set it to like 350 and we'll see how that works. And then let's go ahead and set up the inverse of what we're gonna need for this. So I am going to select this, uh, Control C or Command C, Command V, because I'm going to copy it. Paste it, I'm gonna drop this on a new layer just so you can visually see it a little bit easier. So down here at the bottom, it's kind of cut off on my computer, but I'm clicking the blue layer or one, and then I'm pulling this off to the side. And then also I wanna make sure this is set to fill uh, before this was set to line. Now right now, um, they look the same. So to get the inverse, uh, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is put your vector inside of another vector, or, or in this case, put our square-ish shape inside of another square. So that is what I'm going to do. And you can see when I do that, uh, that we now have the inverse. And then I want to go ahead and group this together because again, we made a different shape. And then for this layer, um, we're also gonna keep it at the same setting. So like 350, uh, 60 for the min and the max, and then 350 for the uh, line interval, and then hit 
Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and load everything up on the Thunderbolt. So I'm gonna drop this in. So I'm gonna be using relative positioning inside of Lightburn. Um, so I don't actually have to have this uh, in the exact right position, uh, but I do wanna have it pretty much square. And, I'm, and then one thing I meant to do already is I'm actually going to find the center point. So I'm just going to draw a couple lines. That is going to be the spot where I drop my laser right on. Now if I get a little bit closer, you can see I've got that red dot positioned right there. So we are gonna be good to go. All right, now we are jumping back into uh, Lightburn and, and I'm actually going to put these on top of each other uh, just so I don't have to mess around with the positioning. So I'm gonna have both of these selected. I'm gonna come up here and use my alignment tools and we are good to go. And then for positioning, I wanna make sure I've got current position selected over here on the laser menu on the bottom right. Uh, and I want my job origin to be from the middle. Uh, and when I do that, I'm actually going to turn off our uh, pocket layer, uh, which I do need to rename. And so when I move that job origin, um, you can see that that green dot is moving. So now it is in the very center. That's kind of hard to see, uh, but we're going to be good to go. Uh, and to double check that, open this up so that you can see what's going on. I'm going to uh, send this to the machine. I'm just going to call this uh, Tiger. And then we're going to frame to make sure everything looks good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my origin on the machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit frame and everything uh, is looking good to go. Okay, so now we're going to close the lid and I'm going to run the bolt. All right, so the first round is done, but looking at it, I think I need to go a little bit deeper just so I have enough room for the veneer to set in with the glue. Uh, anything that sticks up, I'll be able to sand back down. So it's always good to go a little bit deeper than you need. So I'm basically gonna run this one more time. All right, this guy is good to go. Now drop in our veneer and to hold it into place, I'm actually gonna tape it down. Even though I don't have air assist on, uh, I just wanna make sure it stays exactly where I need it to stay. It's also gonna help it stay flat as well. Frame it up, everything looks good. Uh, and I want to make sure to autofocus it as well. We are good to go. All right, so you can tell that we don't have the metal showing through underneath. Uh, so we still got some wood to blow away. Uh, so I'm going to run this pass one more time and then hopefully we should be good. All right, I've just pulled the reverse image off and you can definitely tell that uh, we have the metal underneath. So I'm gonna remove this tape, then uh, we're gonna be able to glue everything together. All right, now before I actually put it on, I am gonna cut out uh, the excess material just so it's a little bit easier for me to line this up. Now I'm really trying to push those pieces in, and this is probably the hardest part of this entire process. I could put some tape on this to kind of help clamp this down, but uh, I mean, it's in there really, really tight. But I think we're actually going to be uh, set. So, so we're gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna come check this out here in a minute. So we've got the tape off and then I quickly sanded it and then I dropped in a few coats of shellac uh, to kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. Uh, but you can see that we have our reverse inlay inside the Tiger. Now I don't have quite as much contrast with this as I did with this Star Wars Aztec symbol. Uh, and I think that is mainly because uh, the wood I was using wasn't quite as light. Also, it probably would be helpful if I had a little bit more white area in the actual Tiger design, uh, but still um, the process worked. Now, if you could do me a huge favor and let me know if this long style full tutorial is something you are interested in seeing more of, let me know down in the comments. I can definitely make some more of these in the future. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.